Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton, your host of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast, back with you um, again today with another really exciting episode. And as always, we always try to bring podcast episodes to you and resources to you guys that will encourage you and equip you in your homeschool journey. And back in June or July, I actually can't remember um, if it was the end of June or beginning of July um, that I met the Boltman family. Um, we were at the Firmly Planted Homeschool Resource Center uh, finishing filming for Schoolhouse Rocked with Heidi St. John. And the Resource Center is Heidi and her family's ministry. And they have, of course, a whole bunch of people who work there with them. And um, one of the gentlemen who works there, his name is Pat Roy. And some of you may recognize his name. And he was the um, the founder of the Jonathan Park series that many of you, especially with older homeschool kids, you would remember that. So he works at the Homeschool Resource Center. And one night we were there and Pat was there with this family, the Boltman family. And so we got to meet them and got to talking with them. And they started telling us about this audio drama series that they do called the Brinkman Adventures. And I was like, I've never heard of the Brinkman Adventures before. And it was really neat talking to them. And this family is just amazing. They have such an incredible ministry. And they were there at a homeschool convention. And so they had gone to visit the resource center. So we got to meet them there. And, and they knew that our family, of course, travels a lot. We're on the road all the time. And so they gave us their um, adventures, the seven seasons of the Brinkman Adventures to listen to on the road. And it was just so fascinating to me that they had done these and that I hadn't heard of them. So of course we continued on our journey and we started listening to this audio drama series and we were like, this is amazing. And what you guys have to understand about me is um, I, my mind wanders all over the place, especially when I'm driving. And typically when we're when we're on the road, I do most of the driving because Garrett is sitting in the passenger seat working on his computer. And a lot of times we'll listen to audiobooks and I will not be able to focus on the audiobook. I'll get bits and pieces of it, but I'm paying attention to the road and the traffic and stuff. Well, the Brinkman adventures were so engaging to me that I could not get enough of them. And I would, I mean, I was like my kids, I was like, okay, we got to listen to the next one. So anyway, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to two of the Boltman family members, Sarah Boltman, who is Aunt Sarah in the Brinkman Adventures, and Josh Boltman, um, who is one of the kids who's grown up as part of the uh, series. And Josh, you're the son of mm -hmm. Ian, right? Who, yep. who created Brinkman yeah. Adventures. And then Sarah, you are Ian's sister. Correct? That's right. Yep. Okay. So sister. quickly introduce yourselves to our audience and then let's talk about these exciting Brinkman adventures. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, I'm Josh Boltman and I um, act, I'm one of the actors that plays in the show. I play Ian um, and I'm a sibling of nine other siblings, <laughs> <laughs> the oldest boy. And um, it's just, I mean, it, I've grown up just making these things with my dad and with my mom and stuff. Yeah. And you play a pretty big role because you, you do a lot of the technical. Uh, yeah. Part of I also, it, right? I also do the sound design and um, some of the web design too. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And Sarah, you wow. have a pretty amazing yeah. part as well. Yeah. It's really fun. So I also act in the show. I'm aunt Sarah. So I come in, in and out a little bit. Um, but be, besides that, I help write the stories. Um, I do the graphic design, like the cover art and um, I'm the co-host of the podcast that we do, the Brinkman podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, I also wrote the Brinkman curriculum, which goes with season one. So that's really fun. Very, yeah, so. Very cool. Well, so let's talk about these Brinkman adventures because the thing that really interested me is that it wasn't just an audio drama for the sake of telling stories. But what you guys have done is you have taken stories from real missionaries and you've turned them and, and you've changed them around a little bit but every one of the adventures is based on a true story of real missionaries right yeah yep yeah almost everyone there is just a few that's focused just on the brinkman family and those are loosely based yeah. on what has happened to, to either our, our ian's family, family or, or yeah my our family yeah so yeah but most of them are all about missionaries yeah they are so cool um we we love mission work. Uh, my husband and I actually met on a mission trip to Mexico when we were in high hmm. school. Cool. And, um, you know, there's just such a need. And we, of course, feel like that America is as big of a mission field yes. as anywhere else in the world. Totally. Yeah. Um, but people who are willing to 
literally die for yes. the gospel, um, no matter what, what the cost, they are willing to go out and, and surrender their whole life to serving the Lord in whatever aspect God has asked them to do that. And so, Sarah, you're not only part of the Brinkman Adventures, but you were a missionary for, I don't know how long, how long were you a missionary? <laughs> Yeah, so I started doing missions um, back in college when I was, I, I went to Bible school in Alaska, and um, God just put on my heart to help people understand what missionaries, what they're really doing. So my dream when I was 17 was to go to other countries and film missionaries in their homes, um, seeing what they're doing and bring those, those films back, basically, um, to inspire people back here in the States to support them, but also to say, wow, I can do that. They're just normal people. Like acting on faith and God is doing amazing things through them. So yeah, back in college, I started doing videos for missions um, in the native Alaskan population. And I just remember thinking, wow, this, the landscape here is gorgeous. I'm in Alaska, there's moose and bear and eagles and mountains, but I realized the real treasure in those places where the people, you know, those tiny little villages full of incredible people that need the gospel and need to hear him and, and the missionaries, they're doing an incredible thing. So, yeah. So since college, I just had this passion for missions and it was in 2008 that I went to Africa for the first time. And, and, you know, when you go there, oftentimes your heart is just, you know, God just puts something on my heart so deeply that I've gone back almost every single year. Sometimes I live there for a whole year and work with a certain ministry and other times it's for three months, one month. So I've gone back almost every single year for um, about 10, 11 years now. Wow. And so some of the Brinkman adventures are actually based on stories of missionaries that you personally know, and yes. you, you've heard these stories on the mission field or maybe even yes. been part of some of them. Mm -hmm. And so you've brought these into the, um, the audio drama series yes. and turned them into stories um, for people to listen to, which is just absolutely yeah. fascinating. And so I didn't actually know when I first started listening, uh, you know, all the way across the country, actually, while we were listening to um, the Brinkman Adventures, I didn't realize that you had a podcast as well. And I'm not oh, yeah. even sure how I, I think maybe I discovered that on your website. And, and I was like, they have a, a podcast. And so yes. talk about the podcast, because the podcast, I just was like, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> <laughs> the Brinkmans, they're so cool. It's the so podcast fun. actually brings on some of the real missionaries yes. of yes. these stories that you're telling. The goal in the podcast was exactly that. Yeah. We're like, these stories are, are so incredible. And some people, when they listen to them, they're like, oh, that can't be real. Mm -hmm. um, but so Ian and I were talking and we're like, these people need to know that these are real stories for one. And for two, we have such an incredible opportunity to get deeper into the heart of the story and let people come even closer to those missionaries and ask, you know, Dave Anderson, who was almost drowning in the Bering Sea, you know, at the very first story, you hear this plane crash, and they're rescued. And um, to be able to hear from Dave yourself, mm -hmm. what that was like to have to trust God in the middle of like, I could probably die right now. I am, I could drown. I mean, I should be freezing to death and, and just hear straight from the missionary's heart. And I, and that's been such a blessing um, to bring people closer to the heart of the stories. Yeah, so it's been awesome. Yeah. So cool. I think my favorite episodes so far that we've listened to, I mean, they are all so good. Um, and uh, really quickly, I actually want to say that though the, the series kind of follows your family, you can listen to one episode in season one, and then you could listen to another one in season <laughs> yeah. five and not be totally lost because it's not a, a chain of stories. You know, yeah. you, you don't leave cliffhanger. Well, some of them have cliffhangers, um, <laughs> But, but you can listen to them here and there and still understand the, the story because yeah. a lot of them yeah. are just very specific to that episode. Um, and, I, and I love that about it. But I think my favorite one that I've heard so far is the one about the carjacking. Mm -hmm. And, yes. oh, that one was so much fun. And it tells the story of these, they were in South Africa. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, well, actually, you tell it. I mean, yes. I'm going to let you tell the story because I, I totally. want to tell it, but you're going to tell it better than I can. So tell That's, the story of the carjacking. Oh, it was so amazing. And actually, that happened to some friends of mine. That's how we heard about this story. When I was serving in South Africa, these guys mm -hmm. told me the story of how they were carjacked. And I was blown away with what happened. So I told Ian and he's like, we need to do this for the Brinkmans. So yeah, it was just um, a friend of mine, Raymond, who actually plays himself in the episode. So it really happened to the guy who you're hearing act. 
um, and he was going to, to buy some cows for to give to his wife's dad. It was like the bride price. He had to get some cows. And on the way back home, they got carjacked. And it was just this very scary situation because in, in South Africa, often, you know, people are wanting to get things, but it often ends up in, in murder. So, you know, someone will be killed for their cell phone. So the fact that they were, had carjacked them, there was almost no doubt in their minds that they were going to be killed at the end of this because they they just want to get rid of the evidence of who, who saw them. So um, they were just super afraid and like didn't know what to do, but they just decided to start praying for the guy who was driving them. They're all like shoved in the back of the van and they just, uh, they told me, and it's not in the episode necessarily because it would take too long, but they prayed for them out loud for almost a half an hour. Wow. So these guys were driving them and hearing these guys, God, we pray for this guy. We know that you love him, God. We ask that you would get, you know, just praying and praying and praying. And they didn't like it at first, but then at the end, they just said, you know, we want you to pray for us. And, um, and they had a change of heart. And in fact, they gave them back their um, bank cards, which was incredible. I mean, they gave them wow. back their cell phones, just took out the the, <laughs> the SIM card so they couldn't call. Um, but at the end, they let them go, which was very um, incredible. And even more than that, um, before they let them go, they were able to really witness to those guys and share the gospel and ask, hey, where are you? Where would you go if you were to mm -hmm. die right now? Um, and Javi, my friend Javi asked that question and he didn't realize that these guys had just gotten a message on the phone saying the police are onto us. Um, we need to find a way to hide because it wasn't just one carjacking. It was actually a string of carjackers trying to get a whole bunch of minibuses. Um, they had a plan. So they had a whole bunch of guys and they, they knew they were in trouble. So he's asking this question, what's going to happen when you die? And these guys' hearts are already racing because they realize we are in a really tricky situation right now we're about to get caught you know there's roadblocks everywhere we have to find a way to hide so it was just providential that that they were speaking that truth into them and um yeah at the end one of the guys the the second guy just said i, I really want this i want god please pray for me help me um to find him and so yeah it, they were able to love their enemies right in the middle of this super scary situation and and were rescued and um that doesn't always happen but it was beautiful to be able to tell that story and my favorite part was at the end when the carjackers let them go they drove away in their other car you know someone came and picked them up and they let the car go they let the guys go took their sim card so they couldn't call the cops but then they took the keys to the van and threw them into the bush because they didn't want them to follow them and it was dark they couldn't find the keys and they were looking i think for an hour yeah and then finally they stopped to pray and they're like god we just want to go home Will you please help us find these keys and right after they prayed that, Javi, uh, Raymond reached out his hand and just banged into them. They were like hanging wow. in a bush. <laughs> wow. So God just like, I hear you. There you go. And um, and they got home. So yeah, so that was just an amazing story and really in encouraging to be able to tell. Because I think it, what it says to us is mm -hmm. when we're in those pressured situations where we're being taken advantage of or things are going crazy you know are we looking at ourselves and the things around us or are we like okay lord what are you doing right now how are you yeah. caring about these people how can i love them and i just love their example of that that is an incredible story and it's so impactful because you know as as christians you know we we are we're set for eternity i mean we yes. we know if we are following christ we know that no matter what happens to us mm -hmm. we're going to go to heaven and, um, but, but like you said, it doesn't happen like that. You know, obviously these guys were carjackers. And so, you know, they, your, your friend, the missionary, well, is he, was he a missionary or is he, both did of he, them were. they yeah. both were missionaries. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they knew that these guys obviously were not believers and, uh, and just for them to have that heart towards these men who had captured them, you know, and that their lives really were on the line and to just yeah. pray for, for their, their enemy. Is yes. what they were doing and be able to share Jesus with them. I mean, that's, yes. that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And that's what God calls us to do, you know, is to pray for our enemies. And um, so what a, what a beautiful example. What Josh, let me ask you, what is your favorite episode? Do you have one? Um, I would say probably there's two that I really love. Um, there's one is in season four. It's called heart song. Um, it's just an amazing story of um, this guy who is, um, in Russia, in the Soviet um, times, before it was, um, before the Iron Curtain came down and stuff, it, um, and he decided to not go to the state church and um, have an, his own house church, 
Um, and so he got arrested after um, some time and he spent 20 years in jail. I think it was. And, yeah, I think it was 17. Oh, 17 years in jail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's just the whole story of his struggle throughout that time. But it was it's such an amazing story. Listen to that one as in season four. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to cool. spoil it. <laughs> yeah, something happened. Yeah, it's which so amazing. It just blows your mind. Yeah. I mean, how God rescued him from that situation. First of all, strengthened him yeah. in the darkest time of his whole entire life. Where yeah. I mean, I'll just share a tiny bit of that part yeah. where um, they finally kind of broke him and he renounced. He was, he was re- willing to renounce the Lord. The next day, he was going to sign the papers. Wow. And something happened that night yeah. as he was just crying and just bro- so broken. Um, something happened that night that God just turned the whole situation around. Yeah. So you have to listen to it because it's yeah. such a good story. And the actor who played that story? It, he was so good. He's probably our... He's just... He's amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> he's so good. He did so good. Yeah. yeah. And then the next one is um, the rescue... Or sorry... Dave Eubank story, our Dave Eubank story. Yes. Um, okay. Operation Mosul. Operation probably. Mosul, yeah. yeah. He, that that yeah. one was recent. That one was our okay. recent, most recent That's a season, season seven? Yep. One, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that story actually, which is so incredible, um, there's something called the Seneca Awards. So all of the Christian audio dramas kind of are in this mm-hmm. award ceremony. And that story actually won for 2008. So, yeah. Oh, here we have the, the oh, <laughs> award. Oh, so cool popped up but yeah it's just because that story um was so so fantastic what that guy did Dave Eubank he was yeah it was he was in ISIS territory um running through ISIS gunfire and rescuing people and um we were able to get the actual audio from some of those rescues and then Dave Eubank comes on at the end and actually talks himself so um it's just so inspiring Mm -hmm. and the events were so incredible and again our actors did an amazing job josh did an incredible job with sound design just making you actually feel like you're Mm -hmm. right there yeah dad Um, did some great stuff with mixing yeah it's great that is so (laughs) very cool yes i i definitely will we haven't gotten to season seven yet um but we will for sure let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk more about this okay so josh you told us your favorite episodes what about you sarah do you have a couple favorites oh man i there's so many that i love yeah um some of my top would be the ones he mentioned but i the others another one or two that i really love um it kind of the family stories are really really sweet and um bring you into just deeper um biblical truths and things that are encouraging to families and there are a couple of those that i really love um one actually it's a bit of a mystery, but it's it's called um, uh, let's see, it's the one about Kate when she's in the Congo. So, do you remember the name of that Crisis one? Crisis in the Congo. Yeah, Crisis in the Congo, I believe. Or Palm Feller, actually. Oh, well, I like both of them because um, just the way that um, the actor is Ashley, but um, just the way that she acted in that was so great. Just hearing like someone who was a youth walking into missions and you know trying to do her best and she's in the congo trying to do some stories and you you kind of follow her journey of realizing what what is really going on and how to more deeply um share the gospel without trying to just do your own agenda so that's that's the first lesson the first one but the second one which i love is a mystery um called mysterious palm feller (laughs) and i love it because they're trying to figure out who's knocking down these palm trees in in this mission compound well, it turns out um, it's linked to this witch doctor that's coming into town. And this is based on a true story of um, that happened in the Congo with Glenn. Um, oh, what's his name? I should have had. Oh, no. Um, anyway, so you can look up his name. His first name is Glenn, but Glenn he was in the Congo. And what happened was there is a witch doctor that would come around and, and basically scare everyone into paying him money for his witch doctor services. And the biggest thing he would say was, all right, people, I have this stick. This staff is so powerful that if anyone touches it, you will die instantly. And um, he had people so afraid. And he also would send guys ahead of time to bury things in the village. And then he would, wow. you know, with his magic powers, find them, you know, so that's oh my him goodness. proving that he's a witch doctor. So Glenn, who is um, a part of this mission, um, he's with Kate in the episode. Well, Kate wasn't there in real life, but he was with Kate in the episode and they realized, all right, this guy, is come to town and he is ruining everything. They had been sharing the gospel there in a, in a long time. And now people were kind of going back to the witch doctor, looking to him to solve their problems instead of the Lord. So 
Glenn said, I need to do something about this. I've kind of been avoiding it, but I have to go. So he went and while he was there, oh, there was a huge crowd. And there was the witch doctor with his really, you know, staff all, all dressed up with feathers. And he's just all dressed up, just yelling at people, people, you, you need this power. You know, th things are going wrong in your village because you're not doing what the witch doctor is telling you to do. And, and Glenn just got so upset. And he said, people, this guy is telling you lies. Like, don't mm. believe it. He, he is basically keeping you bound by these lies, by these spirits that aren't even of God. Like, we need to stand against this. And the, the man was all mad. What are you saying? Stop. And so Glenn said, what's supposed to happen when I touch the staff? They're like, you're going to die. Don't do it. So he goes in front of everyone and grabs the staff and just holds it up in the air. And he's <laughs> like, am I dead? It's like, people look at me. I am not dead. Mm. This is not true. God loves you. And this is just keeping you trapped and everyone was just stunned because that was like so scary and they're just waiting for him to fall over dead or lightning to strike him um nothing happens and then suddenly all the people get super angry it was the witch doctor's minions or whatever they chase him to the building and just you know throwing rocks trying to basically kill him um but god protects him and and he gets away and he ends up just praying for the witch doctor and um, the next day, I believe it was, or the day after, the witch doctor well, came to his door. Oh, wow. <laughs> in the mission compound. And he opens the door. He's like, oh, my goodness, it's Yannick. And Yannick is now dressed in normal clothes instead <laughs> of his witch doctor clothes. And he said, Glenn, he's like, I need you to pray for me. And he's like, what do you want, Yannick? He's like, yeah, I'm not believing him. And he said, no. He said, Glenn, when you came up and spoke, he said, I felt my power go from a 10 to a 2. Wow. I don't even know what that means. But he said, what you have is real. I believe that your God is the real God. And he said, can you please pray for me? So he talked with him all night long. And the next morning, he just fell on his knees, just weeping, just receiving Jesus into his life as a savior. And um, to this day, that guy's serving as like a deacon in one of the churches. Oh, wow. There. Yes. So that story too, just blows me away every time. Just like God's graciousness and faithfulness. Yes. And then Glenn's boldness. Yeah. to say, I don't care what's going to happen to me. I might die, but yep. this is truth. And people should not be distorted and ruined by these lies. Mm -hmm. So powerful story. Wow. That is incredible. I love, love that these are real stories that you guys are telling through Brinkman Adventures, because to be able to see the power of God work in real life is so different than you sitting in a room and writing out a script yes. and making up stories. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when we read the Bible, we, we read these stories and, and it's so unfortunate to me that there are so many people who think, well, they're just stories. They're just made up. Yeah. No, no, they're not. The power of God is so real. We serve an amazing yes. and incredible God. And if we will just open our eyes and we will look for him in everyday life. I mean, mm -hmm. I think sometimes as Americans, we think, well, God does those things in other countries. And he used to do those, you know, back in the Bible days, but he doesn't really work like that now today. Yes, he does. I mean, our yes. family has been privy to many of God's amazing miracles. Same. And, you yeah. know, sometimes we have the opportunities to share them and, and, um, in the right context, we, we do. And there are other times where people would be like, no, nah, that didn't actually happen. And sometimes there's are simple things and then sometimes they're bigger things. And, yeah. you know, God is a God of miracles and wonder. And it's so neat that you guys are bringing these stories to life to impact people um, and, and to really show people how powerful God really is. And so yes. it's absolutely amazing. I love what you're doing. Um, and what a, uh, there's just no better way, you know, we're, as homeschool parents, we believe, and I talk about this on the podcast all the time, when we educate our girls, we find no purpose in educating them if what we're teaching them does not direct their hearts towards Christ mm -hmm. and take them to their knees and to the cross, yeah. because then what's the point, you know, if, if we yeah. just hear, st I'm, and I'm not saying that, you know, listening to fun stories just for fun is wrong. And we, obviously we do that. You know, we, we read books all the time, but to get to hear real stories of real people and real things that God has done yes. is just 
amazing. One of my very favorite stories, um, you know, is uh, George Mueller. I absolutely mm-hmm. love the story yeah. of George Mueller and what God has done in his life. And, yeah. and I think I've maybe even talked about this too, but you know, my, my absolute favorite part of that, of his whole story and, and his whole life of miracle after miracle is when he's standing with the orphans and they're, they're wanting to eat. And they have no food. I don't know if you remember this, but they they have no food on their table. Yes. And he says, we're going to stand. We're going to thank God for the food that we're about to uh-huh. eat. And they have nothing to drink. They have no food on their plates. Mm-hmm. And they thank God, you know, for the food they're about to eat. And then a bread man and a milk man both come to the door and provide all the bread and milk yes. that they need. That is the God that we serve. And yes. that is the God that we are directing our kids' hearts towards. And if we're not yes. doing that, then we're doing it wrong. <laughs> we're doing it wrong. Um and so I'm, I'm so grateful that you guys are bringing these stories um, to us. Take us really quickly. We have a few minutes left. Um, take us kind of through how you bring these stories together. So you, you hear about them. Where, where do they all come from? Because obviously, Sarah, you don't have that many missionary <laughs> friends for Because you have 66 no. episodes, right? We do, um, yeah. That, and we're just that's a lot. Of the, yeah. the, the, the so where have the stories come from? And then how, how do you bring it all together into a Brinkman adventure? So it happens in a lot of different ways. <laughs> um, we get stories all the time, just amazing stories, all like from tons of different st- sources. Um, my dad was at a um, homeschool conference um, last year and um, some guy came up with, to him and he said, do you guys take stories? And my dad was like, yeah, we do all the time. And so he tells um, him his story. And we later that year, that became an episode. Mm -hmm. um called north dakota gold and Mm -hmm. um and that was just i mean that was just one of the ways we've yeah there's books sometimes it's it's a book that has a story in it that we just cannot get away from Mm -hmm. and we just think this one needs to be told in fact there's one coming for season nine that we've been trying to do for a long time a book that we read that we thought this story has to get to more people um or for instance, um, my brother-in-law is a pastor in Alaska. So a couple of his guys that comes to their, his mission conference, we featured their stories um, or just other missionaries that come to our church or, you know, we just pray and we say, God, which stories do you want this generation to hear? Mm-hmm. Um, and so they come to us, like Josh said, lots of different ways. And we just are praying and mm-hmm. keeping our ears open. So if anyone listening to this has an amazing yeah. story, let us know. <laughs> email will turn it into a Brinkman adventure. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's so cool. Exciting. Um, yeah, so from there, then we, um, it, it's quite yeah. a process, it, but we, we kind of all get together in a room and, and bring this story to our attention. We listen to it. We read it. So we have like a, a writing retreat. Yeah. And from there we do storyboarding, which is, um, we write down the basic beats, like the biggest beats on cards. And then we have a big board and we're just putting, okay, this is when he got carjacked, when they pulled him aside. This is when he found the keys in the bush. This is when he witnessed to the guy. Here's when this happened. And so then we put it all out there. Um, and there's a structure we follow loosely, but it has helped, helped us so much in story creation um, called Save the Cat. Is the, That's the book that we use, Save the Cat. And it just kind of helps you bring all the different beats at the right time. And it's it's pretty logical once you get it and it's like oh this makes so much sense um so after we get all the beats down then um ian will go ahead and write a script and then we all kind of come together we read it we offer feedback we tweak it sometimes it needs to be readjusted and parts added and taken away and then at that point we send it to the missionary and they read through it make sure they're okay with everything they sign off they have us change things oh wow okay so you actually get it approved by the missionary to make sure Mm -hmm. that they're yes you know giving the thumbs up Yes. Wow, that's yes. awesome. That's very important yeah. to us because it's neat. their story. So, yeah. and then from there we um it, we have it everything's go, and then we um, get the actors, and we have actors from Milwaukee area. We have actors from all over, and now we're actually doing remote um, acting. So, mm-hmm. a bunch of people in India have acted, and they're sent in their lines. Wow. Um, sometimes we Skype with people, and they have their own um, recording studio, like Haiti. Yes. We did that one. Um, so I was directing actors in Haiti over yeah. Skype, which was fun. And some even in the U.S. too. Yeah. So we'll do the remote yeah. acting. And um, and then it gets all on the computer. And there are just hundreds and hundreds of tracks that you have to mix. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's yeah. where Josh becomes just like the guru of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and Ian just yeah. mix that down and make it sing. And we have someone who writes original music for us. Um, Jared DeFasquale is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Um, 
composer and he wow. just makes the story come to life through music. I mean, he loves the Lord so much. And he said, I would just love to, he, he reached out to us. He said, I would love to write the score for your audio drama. And he does a lot of the other ones as well. Like Adventures in Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Heirloom. And, Heirloom. And... Yeah. So he does ours as well. And yeah, and then we just mix it all down. Josh does Foley. So all the footsteps, mm -hmm. the <laughs> banging on things and <laughs> splashing in water. And, yep. um, and then there's a lot that goes into that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's a whole bunch of other processes too but <laughs> yep. wow. and then we yeah release it it is fantastic and then josh you like you said in the beginning you are the oldest boy of mm -hmm. 10 kids yep and, and so we're all homeschooled and you're all homeschooled yep um which is amazing because this has given you an opportunity to do this as a family ministry. We talk a lot yeah. about that on the podcast that, you know, if you, if you guys were all going your separate ways during the day for five days a week, you would not have the opportunity to put as much into this as you do. Mm -hmm. And you and all, do all of your siblings act in these? Yep. Uh, okay. Most of, most of them do right. And this next. Or have, have at some most, point. Yeah. Have at some point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is so cool. And I, I think I had heard on one of your podcasts that you're, all of the character names, well, most of the character yep. names of you and your siblings are your middle names. Is that yep. correct? Okay. Yep. So my that middle is... name is Ian and I play Ian in the show. But okay. then there's like two exceptions where they, we just changed it because they were kind of hard to say or they were too close to. Sure. Um, okay. Other oh, names, but... <laughs> it's so fantastic. I absolutely love what you guys are doing. And, um, you know, we, I, I am on a mission to get every family to know about the Brinkman Adventures. <laughs> I feel I felt like I struck gold when we started listening to them. I was so excited when I uh, when I you know brought them back to the girls um, at Heidi's house and I was like look what we got and they were like oh okay we've not heard of those and um, and we have just really loved them and then you've you know you've got the podcast which again just makes it so much more exciting to get to hear the real yes. stories um, that the actual you know some of them the actual missionaries um, mm -hmm. and then really quickly you mentioned something about a curriculum so you have the Brinkman Adventures curriculum you said that yes. goes with season one yes, what is that so awesome. it just keeps getting better Sarah yeah, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I know well it, that also was born out of a, a, a desire to go deeper into the heart of these lessons or the, the stories mm -hmm. so um, we decided let's write curriculum around each story of season one and um, so basically it's for like a Sunday school or homeschool or a homeschool co-op and it's structured what you would need for homeschool and um, Sunday school. So it's about an hour long. You listen to like an eight minute clip of the story that kind of plays the synopsis of it. And then you go deeper into what does it mean to love your enemies? Do you have enemies? What kind of enemies are actually in your life? You know, they're not probably the kind of enemies that Raymond and Javi had, but what are the enemies that you have and how can you love them right now? Mm. So it's really practical in, in helping the kids to apply those lessons to their own life. Um, but then there's also fun stuff like crafts that go along with it. There's games that go along with it. There's um, science experiments and object lessons that really help the concept just come alive. Mm -hmm. um, so that first one is 12 different um, lessons that you can do and each one are about an hour long. Okay. And you, you also get season one with it. So um, you can listen to the whole story or just that synopsis, depending on your group size and style. But um, we found that parents and teachers have loved it because again, it's introducing kids to real stories of God mm -hmm. working in the world. Um, so it's been a super great resource for people. Very cool. And so that's geared more towards elementary age kids, it sounds yep, like. It's about eight to 12 year olds. Okay. Um, and another resource I wanted to mention that you haven't mentioned yet is on the website, you can go to the real stories tab. And mm -hmm. um, that is amazing because you just click there and go to the season that you're listening to and go to the story and it will write in detail what really happened. You know, some of the funny things that you don't even get mm -hmm. to hear on the episode, but some of the deeper details, it has pictures of the real people. Um, so it's basically like a blog that brings you also deeper into these stories. So cool. And about how long is each episode? 25 minutes and 55 okay. seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly how long yeah. is each episode? Yeah. <laughs> it's on the radio, yeah. so it has yeah. to be Yes. That. Oh my goodness. It's so cool. And so, yeah, you guys are on the radio. You said more than 500 station outlets yes. around the world. Yes. You guys are all over. I, I just, I, I can't understand where, <laughs> I, I don't know where I've been, but <laughs> how I hadn't heard of this. But anyway, for so those cool. who have not heard of it until now either, I am so honored to be able to introduce you to the Brinkman Adventures. Um, 
you have on your podcast, you have three full episodes on yes. there. So people can actually go on there, listen to three full episodes. We will link to those in the show notes so that people can get a really good idea of what the Brinkman Adventures are. And then what is the website where people can learn more? Yeah. So the website is brinkmanadventures.com. Okay. And they can obviously order yep. any of the, yep. the DVDs on there yep. uh, or not DVDs, CDs. Yeah. CDs oh, okay. or digital download. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Well, these are great. I mean, I can just see people using these for, you know, their kids quiet times, you know, breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, dinner, any of yes. those things are in the car like us. And yes. um, that's typically where we listen to audiobooks and things like yeah. that. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for what you're doing. You guys have an amazing ministry and I love, we, we love family ministry uh, because it's what we do as well. We love that we get to work together as a family and just have some kind of impact, you know, in, yeah. in God's kingdom. I mean, it's what God's called us all to do, no matter what it is. And not everybody has to have, you know, make a movie or <laughs> create an audio drama, you know, whether, whether you're, you know, just speaking truth to your children as you're snuggling them and reading to them and raising up yeah. you know, the next generation of Jesus lovers. Um, or if you're making movies or audio dramas, um, it doesn't matter um, as long as we're all doing something to impact God's kingdom. But I love that you guys get to do this as a family. So yeah. thank you for all the work that you put into it. It shows it is so well done, so professionally done. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for for your time that you put into doing this and for talking with us yeah. today. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for yeah, having us. Yeah. It's been yes. super fun and just blessings on what you do too. I cannot wait to see the movie when it comes yeah. out. Oh, <laughs> you and me both sister. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to see it either, but thank you again. Um, Thank you guys for listening to the podcast today. Remember, please go to iTunes and leave a review for the podcast. Those are such a blessing to us. Um, and not only a blessing to encourage us, but it also really helps others to find the podcast. The more reviews we have, um, the, the higher we move up in their, I don't even know what you call it, their ranks, um, so that people can learn more about homeschooling and, and be encouraged in their homeschool journey. So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. We will be back with you again next week and have a great week. Okay. Yay! <laughs> That's enough. Awesome. But you're